last review, take three. All right, so normally what I do with reviews to give a little behind the scenes of how I do things around here is I type out my entire review for the movie I'm doing and I you know go line by line and I try to figure out what I'm going to say. Sometimes I change and edit things as I go, but for the most part, my entire review is scripted. I have everything set up. I try to get everything I want to say all in a concise thing that I can get done in about four minutes. Um, but for this review, for the movie Glass, of course, um, I'm going to do something a little bit differently. I'm going to try to do this all unscripted, just all at once, because this is actually the third time I've tried making this review. And it's not because of, at one point it was some technical issues, uh, but I've rewritten my my script for this review twice now. And I can't figure out how in the world to review this movie. And so don't worry, this review will have absolutely no spoilers. Of course, I'm not going to spoil anything. I will be doing a full-on spoiler review in-depth, breaking the end of this movie down uh, with my brother once he sees the movie uh, later this weekend. So, yeah, as you can tell, this this movie for me has been frustrating in so many ways. Uh, to get this right off the bat, uh, you know, I'm going completely off script here. I'm going to be a little bit everywhere. Uh, but I did really enjoy this movie. I know this movie's not getting great reviews. Uh, if you read through some of them, you know, they have some great points in terms of the ending and how things don't really come together the way that people want to or the way that people expect it to be. And that's one thing, because this movie is an M. Night Shyamalan movie, and I tweeted this out immediately after I saw the movie, is nobody else in the entire world, no other director could have made this movie besides M. Night Shyamalan. And it's so just, you know, if you've seen any M. Night Shyamalan movies before, it's... There's twists, there's turns, he breaks convention every turn he gets. It does not go by the book at all. In some ways it does, and it does it on purpose because in the end it's not really being conventional, and there's so many different things and like elements towards the end of this movie that just throws everything out of whack. And uh, it's just, this movie for me, at least, I really enjoyed the first like hour and a half, okay? And then the last 20 minutes happen. And it's like... I don't know how if like I don't I've seen the movie twice as well like this this review is baffling to me because I just don't know how to go about reviewing this movie I did like it for the first like 20 minutes you know it's your standard what you expect after the ending of Split you know you see David Dunn uh, still doing his superhero thing after 20 years you know he's working with his son he's he's trying to track down the horde all these things and it's awesome it's what you expect from this movie but then the movie takes a turn and the majority of this film actually takes place in a mental institution and this is what i love about this movie is yes it could have gone the the you know cliched not really cliched but the you know the standard superhero type story where you know you have the batman with bruce willis and then you have the oracle with his son you know going over the com links you know giving him information and stuff like that and we've seen that a million times before uh but what happens in this movie is it really breaks down these characters which same with split and unbreakable those movies are character pieces they're not normal superhero movies we didn't even know that unbreakable was a superhero origin story until the end of the movie and he didn't know Split was an unbreakable movie until the end of that movie as well. And it's a super villain origin story. And this movie takes these characters, it, it brings them to Mr. Glass, and you have these three characters who believe they are superpowered individuals. And it really breaks them down as to, it makes us as the audience question, and these characters themselves question whether or not they are delusional, whether or not they actually have these superhuman abilities, or if their beliefs are what make them what they are, or if we can be greater than what we believe we can be. And the the different like metaphorical like messages that this movie has, I do think is brilliant. The undertones it has, and especially when it comes to the ending, you can pick it apart and say, oh, that's what this means, that's what this means, and everybody will have their different interpretations of it. Uh, but it goes in a route that I don't think anybody in the entire world could have predicted. I think the ending of this movie is so just out there. He really swings for the fences, and that's what I admire about Shyamalan. He takes risks, unlike any other director. He really goes for it. He made the story that he wanted to make, and uh, it's you know it's his trilogy. This is M. Night Shyamalan's superhero trilogy. It's unlike any other trilogy I've ever seen. All three movies are so very different. You know, Unbreakable is a slow burn type uh, 
you know, superhero. It's not even really superhero. Like, it's a character piece about David Dunn trying to figure out whether or not, you know, he has these abilities. And with Mr. Glass, um, you know, trying to get him to realize and to kind of figure out if he himself has a purpose or if he was a mistake or not. And then in Splits, it's about this guy who is torn in the mind, literally split into different personalities and different personas. And uh, these different personas, you know, some of them believe in the Horde, some of them don't. And this movie really takes both the tones of those two movies, kind of blends them together in one, and at a point it becomes its own movie. And the ending of this movie has basically three different elements, and I'm going to try to be very vague here. But there's three different elements of this movie uh, towards the end that one of them is something that I think is completely earned. Uh, I don't want to say what it is, obviously, but I do think it is a very earned and very kind of poetic end to this story. Uh, and then one of the things is very, con not really confusing. I want to say confusing, but it's not confusing. It's frustrating because it doesn't go into it as much as I want it to, and it doesn't explain it enough to where I am filling in the blanks, and I can fill in the blanks perfectly fine. You know, I can make excuses for the film as to why this makes sense, I shouldn't have to make excuses for the movie, and that's what it feels like. And then the third element, I, I think, is a very satisfying ending. And that's the, the last thing that happens in the movie. I do think that I, I found that very satisfying, and I liked how this movie wrapped up. But most of the elements in this movie, towards the last 20 minutes, is very conflicting. It's frustrating. I can see how some audiences are either going to hate it, some people are going to love the ending, and, you know, this, like I said, this is M. Night Shyamalan here. You know, he throws twist after twist after twist towards the end, and it's it's interesting. This movie is very, very different. I really like this movie. Um, I like it for the most part. I don't think it's as good as either Split or Unbreakable. I think it is the worst of the three, but in terms of performances, of course, uh, James McAvoy kills it. Samuel L. Jackson, once he shows up, he shows up, and he is fantastic. And Bruce Willis gets, like, the least out of all three characters. Um, he gets the least to do... And, you know, he's fine in the movie. He's not amazing. Uh, but even his character in Unbreakable is kind of flat. So, you know, it's a continuation of that. They bring in his son, the same actor who plays his son. And he's not a great actor, to be completely honest. But it's cool seeing him back. Uh, Anya Taylor-Joy, her storyline with, uh, with James McAvoy is the best thing in the movie. Uh, this movie really is a split two in so many ways. And I think that they're... Because I wish they had more time with them in this movie. Uh, but I found that to be great. Sarah Paulson in this movie, I actually really like her. Some people are giving her some hate, uh, but I think she's a very interesting character. And on second watch, you pay more attention, and it's 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 interesting. It's very interesting. Uh, I like what she's doing. Like I said, vague. I don't know how to review this movie. I'm going completely off script right now. I, I really enjoyed this movie. I think you should all go see it to, for yourself to kind of figure out whether or not you like how this movie wraps up. I really want to get into it, so don't worry, I will be doing a spoiler review, like I said. I'm going to be talking about this movie for a while. I think everybody's going to be talking about this movie for a while. Whether you loved it or you hated it, this movie is going to start conversations. And it's so different. It's not your, you know, run-of-the-mill superhero movie where you have the heroes and the villains clash. It's like, there are a few action sequences in this movie that I really like. When it does hit, you know, Sean Wan does a pretty good job directing them, but he overuses some, like, perspective shots. And this weird thing where the camera is like attached to the character and it tracks them very closely. And it's a little bit odd at first, but you know, I got used to it and I found that to be just a very interesting, unique style of directing. And it's definitely something that no other director would do besides Shyamalan. Uh, this, is, this is a movie. That's what this is. I really want to talk about it more. So check back at the channel in a few days for the spoiler-filled spoiler review. Um, I will be doing that. Go check this movie out. See for yourself. Don't let other people's opinions change your mind on this movie because I feel like everybody's going to find this movie different. Everybody's going to... This movie not for everyone. Uh, it's not even completely for me. It's, But it's, it's good enough for me to enjoy and for me to want to watch it again, for me to want to pick it apart into pieces. I think Shyamalan really cares about his craft and he's a director that I will always be going to his movies I think his career has been a roller coaster, and this movie in and of itself is kind of a roller coaster. The good, the bad, the crazy that Shyamalan is, you know, known for. So go check out this movie. This review is probably a little bit longer than normal uh, because, you know, I went off script.
But yeah, so check this one out, guys. Uh, thanks for watching this review, and I'll see you guys all in my next review.